The new Apple M1 lineup seems to be living up to their hype. I bought a new MacBook Air, but as a YouTuber who does a fair amount of video editing, why didn't I buy the new MacBook Pro? Or better yet, the more powerful Mac Mini? Let's find out. Hey, it's Andy, and in this video, I wanna break down the new Apple M1 processor and computer lineup. And if you're in a technology like me, please hit subscribe and that bell so you get notified as I'm releasing new videos every week. Videos on Apple and other tech news, device reviews, and the occasional tutorial. I even threw some links down below for some quick access to some of my more popular videos covering those other topics. Now there are a lot of videos already out there covering these new processors in all the detail and also videos going in way, way deep into all the benchmarks available for these new computers. So we're just gonna gloss over what the new M1 processors are, what computers were released that have the processors in them, and how I ended up on the MacBook Air. First, why did Apple make this switch to this new M1 processor? Well, this is kind of a recurring trend in Apple's roadmap. Back in 2005, they did a similar switch where they moved from the IBM made PowerPC to Intel. And at the time, Apple stated the reason they were doing this is the PowerPC demanded too much power and ran too hot to be able to put in portable notebook computers. And I think the trend is a little similar here where Apple has uh, almost a decade of experience under their belt making their own processors now and has decided they can make ones better than Intel. And this is as big a change as it was back in 2005 going from the x86 architecture to the new M1 ARM based architecture. This is gonna require that all applications be rewritten to take advantage of the new instruction set, but those that aren't yet will be processed through a translation layer which Apple calls Rosetta 2. And Rosetta's been around a while. They introduced this back in 2005 when they made their uh, last change, architecture change, and they're doing it again here. All reviews point to, however, this translation layer being extremely efficient. You would think that any application that has to first be translated before it can be actually ran is just gonna take a huge performance hit. And so far, that's just not the case. And that really says something about these chips. During their presentation in true Apple fashion, they did present these semi-ambiguous graphs showing just how crazy of a leap in performance and efficiency that these new chips can present. And so far from all the reviews and benchmarks, they're living up to it. So as outrageous as Apple claims have been so far, they seem to be right. So this new M1 chip, this is a completely new system on chip architecture for Apple. System on chip meaning it houses all the main components, CPU, GPU, a neural engine, and what they call a unified memory. On the CPU side, this thing does have eight cores, four performance cores and four efficient cores. On the GPU side, it is comprised of an eight core GPU and the unified memory pool is really called that because that unified memory pool would be shared amongst the CPU, GPU and neural engine. And because it all resides on the same silicon, it will be available quicker between all the different components. I mentioned already some of the impacts this has to the applications that are gonna run on the Macs, where those that have not been rewritten and optimized for M1 will have to be translated through the Rosetta 2 layer. But this does present an opportunity where the ARM-based architecture uh, will allow iPad and iPhone apps to run on the Macs. And early indications are those experiences leave a lot to be desired. So developers have some work to do. But the real impact here is this, this puts the control back in Apple's hands. They've always made their own hardware and all, they have always written their own software, but now they've taken that to the extreme and are even producing the silicone that the OS is gonna run on. And this just gives them control over the entire ecosystem. And with, this is really the reason that this thing is really gonna hum. So there were three new Macs that were announced. They're gonna come with the new M1 chip inside. That's the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini. Well, starting at the bottom, the MacBook Air. 
This is really the ultra portable Apple's entry level notebook. In this Mac, for some reason, the M1 chip does come in two variants, one with only seven of the GPU cores active and the other with all eight active. There is some rumors uh, floating out there that the reason this is is because of some error in production and Apple has decided to sell these at a discounted price. I don't know how true those are, but in my comparison, uh, I didn't even bother looking at that seven core GPU one. But a lot of the performance reviews out there did include those in their reviews and the performance was still impressive. From the outside looking in, this does appear to be the same looking MacBook as appearances and price are exactly the same. However, this the retina display on this one is slightly improved where it's gonna take advantage of a new P3 wide color gamut and true tone technology. And on the IO side, it has two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports. In performance wise, they are claiming that this thing will have up to an 18 hour battery. That's two full days of work. And on the inside, there is no fan on this MacBook Air, so no active cooling, and this does play a factor in performance where over long duration tests and benchmarks, we have seen where performance has throttled, and that's expected. There's no active cooling, so they do have to limit the power of the processor so as not to overheat. Okay, jumping over to the MacBook Pro. Again, this is the same exact M1 processor we find in the MacBook Air, the one with all eight GPU cores active uh, and offering up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory. From the outside in, this almost looks identical to the previous MacBook, Air, MacBook Pro. However, there is only two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports on this, just like the MacBook Air. It does seem like there is a limitation to the M1 processor, only allowing it to control up to two ports. This does have the same display as the MacBook Air, same size P3 color gamut, True Tone technology. However, it does come in at 100 nits brighter, so slightly brighter, so a little better for those users that use their laptops out in sunlight. This laptop does come with a fan, the MacBook Pro, so it does have active cooling. So performance reviews have shown that over long duration, extended performance is better compared to the MacBook Air. And that's expected by introducing active cooling, you're allowing it to consume more power, run a little hotter, and the um, performance is showing this. That's not to say that it's just chewing up power where the MacBook Pro, they're telling us now that this will have a 20 hour battery of wireless web surfing. And uh, again, two, two full days without charging your laptop is just gonna be awesome. Some comparisons I glossed over between the two is on the AO side, they both will take advantage of the new Wi-Fi 6 technology and Bluetooth 5.0. They both come with Touch ID and the same great keyboard and trackpad that we have come to love over previous generations of MacBook. Those Thunderbolt ports will only support up to one external display up to 6K resolution. And as we would expect, the internal SSDs are faster than the previous generation. Oh, and they come with the same crappy 720p webcams. And rounding out the lineup is the new Mac Mini. This is the new baseline powerhouse for Apple. Again, the same M1 processor maxed out with up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory, eight GPU cores, eight CPU cores. The IO is slightly different here where they're also offering only two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, but also two USB 3 ports in the form of USB A. So for me, where did I land on all of these? Well, I currently do all my work on a late 2015, 27 inch 5K iMac using a quad core i5 processor and discrete graphics card. I don't have any performance gripes at all. I'm not looking to upgrade because I feel like I need more horsepower. It's really the portability that I'm after. So that immediately eliminated the Mac mini for me. I no longer want to be tied to a desktop. I need some freedom, even though we can't go anywhere. So then it came down to the MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro. Even though the MacBook Air lowest model comes with only a seven core GPU, Again, I didn't waste my time with that one. I, I stuck with the eight core GPU to do all my comparisons and spec'd out the same MacBook Air versus MacBook Pro, both with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte internal SSD. There is only a $250 price difference between the two. So is the Pro $250 better? 
Well, like I said, the Air is basically Apple's entry-level notebook. And for all intents and purposes, the least powerful Mac that they're going to put an M1 processor in, right? Moving forward, there will there will not be a, least, a lower powerful Mac than the MacBook Air. This is their entry level. The Pro, on the other hand, does have that active cooling, so it provides better performance over sustained durations, that slightly brighter display for use, you know, in direct sunlight, and it does have those studio quality mics. But when it all comes down to it, I haven't read a single thing that convinced me that that touch bar really enhances usability at all. The display, I can't see any benefit of having a display that slightly brighter where I'm doing most of my work inside anyway. What really tipped the scales was some of the benchmark performance numbers that I saw. And going with the MacBook Air, I didn't feel like I'm compromising performance at all. I'm just getting the ultra ultimate portability with ultimate performance available today. And I really didn't want that touch bar. Okay guys, so that's it for the roundup on the new M1 lineup and the computers, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini. I stuck with the MacBook Air, which I think is the best bang for the buck in the lineup here if you're looking for portability and performance. Let me know what you think. If you decide to go with the MacBook Pro or you're waiting out for the M2 processor, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.